hello this card I'm making today I saw made by Jennifer McGuire on her YouTube channel this card features a technique using the distress oxide inks she called it the magic stencil technique as soon as I saw it I just had to get my hands on the materials that she used to create this card and try it myself I had a a few near a few false starts with it but I think I got the hang of it now and I wanted to share it with you today let me go over the materials that I'm going to be using for this card all right the papers that I'm using today is a card base cut eight and a half by five and a half scored it four and a quarter a white panel which is cut four and a half by five and a half this is not the usual dimensions that I use for my white panel but you needed the extra space and you'll see why I also have a white scrap which is three and three quarters by two the inks I'm using today is the distress oxide inks I have faded jeans cracked pistachio and broken china as Jennifer McGuire did, I'm also going to demonstrate how this technique turns out with regular distress inks. So I have those same colors in the regular distress inks. I don't have the cracked pistachio in a large pad, so this is all I have. In addition, I'm going to be using the Versifying Onyx Black, the Memento Tuxedo Black, and the Memento Bamboo Leaves. Make a little bit of room. These stamps are from the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero card kit. It came with this stencil, this stamp set with matching dies. It also came with paper, some inks. Uh, I don't know what this bottle is. It's translucent. It's iridescent something rather I don't know I haven't investigated this part because this was the part that I was mostly interested in and it has matching sequins and it also had some rhinestones but I'm not going to be using these things today I'm also using the Mer Amazing stamp set from Hero Arts and the Believe in Yourself Narwhal Framed Die Cut from Hero Arts. This is a two-piece die cut and this is how this part was cut out. This is an intricate die so you'll need to use your precision base plate when you cut this out to make sure that it frees all the little bits. I will also need a bottle of water. This is a small mister. I don't have the larger uh, mister but this will work just fine and I'm also going to be doing some uh, coloring with these alcohol markers this is the spectrum noir version of the Copic markers um, and I also want just a regular marker I'm going to list all of these colors on my uh, comment section to this video so we don't have to slow down to go through it so let me clear away this stuff and we'll jump right in and I'll show you the technique Before I start, I forgot to mention that I also need a white panel, which is cut five and a quarter by four. Okay, this is the uh, panel, which is five and a half by four and a half, and we'll start out by add it, adding the colors one by one. I'm going to start out with the cracked pistachio and the distress oxide inks. They blend a lot easier than the regular distress inks. So you just drop the color in directly to the paper, just like I'm doing here. And let's see, let's put a little bit here too. You know, I meant to put a glove on because I'm trying to keep my fingers a little clean. Give me a second. Because the Distress Oxide inks a little bit messier than the regular ones. The regular ones, and I don't want to accidentally touch all over the thing. 
and, and spread it where I don't want it, which I am really good for doing. So, oops, I already have that one. So just change the pad and keep going with the next color. And you see how easy this blends. It blends right over it. It's a lot easier and quicker than the regular distressed inks, which I'll show that in a second too. Broken China, now the faded jeans. It really is pretty effortless on the blending. to go. I like it. Now set that aside. Now I haven't found a less messy way to do this so sorry. So set that aside for a second and you bring in the stencil and the water and you just spray it. I think I wanted to go that way. Just give it a light spraying of water all over. That's good. Get some paper towels, excuse me while I reach behind me. I'm going to need this, have it ready. Okay, and you just pick this up. That's a little bit too much water on the thing. And bring this over and lay it right down on top. Except I wanted it to go that way, didn't I? And you take your dry paper towel and just press it and get the extra water up. Carefully lift it. And there you go. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it transfers the design of the stencil. So I'm going to take this off camera and dry it with my heat tool. I could let it air dry, but I want to hurry this up. I'll be right back. Okay, here we are, all dry. You can really see the impression from the stencil that shows up. Now I'm going to go through with another piece of paper and do the same technique using the regular distress, ox distress inks, but I'll speed this part up because I'll be doing the same thing again. You'll see that it'll take a lot more blending with the regular distress inks than it did for the distress oxide.
Okay, I'm going to go dry this also. Okay, now the outcome looks very similar to the first one. It's just it's a little bit dotty over. That might have just been the spray pattern that I used. The, um, the blending was the difference that I could see. It took a little bit more effort to blend on this one than it did on that one. Okay, moving on to the next step. Let's get this stuff cleared away and then we'll move on to the next thing. Now I'm going to do all the stamping that I'm going to need done. The mermaid I'm going to stamp in the tuxedo black on the smaller piece. My pad's a little dry um, so I'm going to have to press a little extra hard. Sorry if it shakes the camera. The reason I'm doing doing the memento black, uh, tuxedo black for this instead of the versafine is that I'm going to be using alcohol markers and the uh, versafine I do not know if it would not run and bleed so I'm not going to use that and I know the tuxedo black will stay put. All right, I'm going to go and clean off all my stamps afterwards. And this is the this part. So I'm going to stamp my sentiment, see you soon, in the Versafine. In the lower corner. And now I have the other the, the card base and I have it with the mountainside up which is the inside of the card and the sentiment which says an ocean full of thanks okay and a little clownfish And now for the memento bamboo leaves, I have a little seaweed or coral. This is probably coral, but we're going to make it green. So I'm going to stamp once and then immediately stamp again to give a, a shadow effect, just a little off. All right, that is all the stamping that we need. Now moving right on to the color. Set that aside, that aside, and bring in my markers. I am not the best with the alcohol markers and these are, um, I had a lot of these markers and they've gotten a little dry so I had to get the colors that I did have that I knew would work. So I'm going to speed right through this part so that the video isn't too long but you basically do the same way with the alcohol markers as you've seen me do with the watercolor pencils and the watercolor markers. You start with one color. In this case, I'll do the little fin here with the blue. And the top part, I want it to be green. And the darker turquoise in the middle. And use it to blend it. Just overlap it a little bit. And then I'm taking the lighter marker, the blue, and just little circles and blend the color out on both sides. And then a little bit of the green. Oops, wrong side. This marker has a chisel point and a fine point. I need the fine point for this. So little circles will blend the blue area in. UPS at the door. <laughs> okay, I'm going to speed through the rest and it's the same technique and I'll play a little bit of music.
Okay. That's all of this coloring that's needed for the for the card. Now I need to take this and run it through my big shot. You can see it. Making sure that I leave enough space that this isn't cut off and center it in the paper. And for this little lady, there's a die cut for her. If you didn't have the die cut, of course, you could cut it out by hand, but it comes with the kit. And the only way to get this is to get the kit. So I'll just line it up and run it to my Big Shot and I'll be right back. Okay, I used a bit of micropore tape to hold the die cut in place. You could use that or a post-it and it just pops right out. There's the fish. And there's the mermaid. Okay, throw this away, I don't need it. And here is the die. This is an intricate die, as I mentioned. So I'm going to use my die brush to get that off. This is sold by Stampin' Up. And it comes with this foam and this brush. You just roll it back and forth over your die and it frees it and all the little bits and pieces. It doesn't hurt it at all. So there's all the little bits. I'm just going to take my pokey tool, which I don't immediately see it. And get the last little bitty pieces out. There we go. I'm careful not to throw this away. If you've watched my other videos, I have a bad habit of accidentally throwing my dies away. So here it is proof I didn't throw it away. Can now just assemble the card. Here is my background and I need to trim off part of the background. So this was if you remember at four and a half and now I want to trim it to four. almost forgot I have to trim it this way also at five and a quarter five and a quarter alrighty now this piece sorry I, cl I cleaned up my little area so of course now I can't find anything <laughs> I use my tape gun. So you just run a little bit of tape down here. And this goes right along the edge. And this is why this dimension was five and a quarter because the card base five and a half because the card base is five and a half. And that brings a little bit of the outside to the inside. Press the seam shut with my bone folder. Yep. All right. And this needs some foam tape. Come on, you. I wish I had dropped on the floor. <laughs> So I'm going to cut this part out so you don't have to watch me cut all the little bits. But basically, I just need to make sure that I have foam tape for all the little corners.
Okie doke. So, you get this little warping out of the way, just bend it back a little bit. Tape this down. Careful not to tear off the little turtle guy because he's really delicate. Lay that over the first one. Yep. Now, the mermaid, put a little tape on this side. And the fish he needs a little bit of foam tape below him, I think, a very small piece. Grab my little tweezers for this one. Now I need a little rhinestone action on the background, so I have my rhinestones on my sheet, another tweezers, I'm getting better with the rhinestones <laughs> if you've been watching my videos. And these are just like the little bubbles in the water. The stamp set does come with a bubble stamp, but I thought I'd rather have the sparkly. So there's the card all finished. I also have done up the card with the other one. <clears throat> the Distress Ink one too, so you can see them side by side. Okay, there we go. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I do uh, pretty frequently put out new content. I'm going to be doing these more to distress inks. Look out for more of these little mermaids. I This is just beyond adorable. I love them. This card is specifically going to be actually for my sister-in-law who has a travel business, Darlene's Travel. And she needs thank you cards and get well cards. I mean, Bon Voyage cards occasionally. So this is a design that I'm going to give to her. Hi Darlene. Take care. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Oh, I was so busy I forgot to give my brother major props. Thank you David for the music that you have been providing for my videos. You can check out his channel. I have a link down below in the comment section. And he wrote this song specifically for this card. It's called Mermaid's Kiss. Thank you. <music>